Beale Street Could Talk is the follow-up by Barry Jenkins to his Oscar-winning film Moonlight and takes place in Harlem in about the 1970s or so. <clears throat> anyway, it focuses on two individuals, Tish and Fonny. T uh, their love is very pure and true, but Fonny is accused of a crime that he could not have committed. And at the same time, Tish finds out that she's pregnant with Fonny's child. And so, this video comes um, from, a, from an old script that I made, um, which I've updated to my current liking because my, uh, my tastes and how I work, work on videos has changed immensely. If you look back, I think I made this, uh, I made this script around January 2019, so, so a little over a year ago, and just see a lot of the videos that I did then, it's completely different from, from what I'm doing now. And, I don't know, I just felt like I put too little on, on that actual script, and I, hopefully this update will make it a better review. So anyway, before I get into m uh, my thoughts on the film, I want to first remind you guys to hit that like button, and also to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, especially that button if you're not a subscriber. And a uh, normal short disclaimer for those of you who are new, I use a pro and con uh, sort of setup with my reviews, but I don't usually keep the sections separate, but then sometimes I do. I don't know, we shall see how this overall product uh, emerges as we go through together. Now, let's get into my review of If Bill Street Could Talk. The film is told in a non-linear structure, which I really enjoyed uh, it being done this way, because as you had heard from the synopsis, this film has a lot of darkness into it. And going from the present day scenes, where everything feels like it's just going to the sh to shit, to the the past, where all that uh, all that focus is on the two main characters and their love uh, for each other, really affirms the seriousness of the present day situation and just how much it's affecting them and those that surround them. And the closer that it got to the trigger, the moment where where the upheaval began, just seen in the present day scenes, the more naturally terrified I was because I was on the edge of my seat just sitting, waiting and waiting to see when is, when is it going to get real. Of course, uh, the normal things with Barry Jenkins uh, are, are very notable in this. The costume design, the cinematography, his use of colors. I mean, in Moonlight, there was a lot of emphasis on purple and blues, but in Beale Street, it's more of the reds, greens, and kind of goldish yellows, and it at least looks pretty. This next part, I didn't actually write into the script until much, much later, so it feels kind of disjointed and kind of... Uh, when I mention it, it kind of throws everything for a loop, but basically, I'm one of those people where I, even though I can appreciate Barry Jenkins' um, more uh, artistic style in the moment, in, in the long run, I find it a bit pretentious, especially because I, I'm like, okay, it looks really pretty, but then I don't really feel any connection to it, and I can just go off later and, you know, be like, okay. Because, like, well, honestly, Moonlight, the last time I watched it was... <clears throat> was to recap for the review that I did on that film, and that was, like, two years ago. I have no urge to watch that movie now, and honestly, I don't feel like watching this movie either, even though there are still more uh, positives to, um, sorry. I feel a little congested today, so I'm gonna power through it. <clears throat> but basically, there are more, there are more positives to this review. It's just, you know, I wanted to throw that out there so that it's not so disjointed later. The first act is completely flawless and well paced. It's actually my favorite section of the film, especially because it involves an ensemble scene where both Tish's and Fonny's families are coming together, and this is after uh, Fonny has already been uh, put in jail, or at least he's awaiting his trial in, in some way, but um, just both families show up together and you know every it's so that Tish can tell everybody that she's pregnant and this scene is such a powerhouse in acting and it's just it's amazing to watch and while everybody gives a really good performance all together in this scene the standout in this scene as well as pretty much every other scene that she's in in the film <laughs> is 
is Regina King. Regina King plays Tish's mother, and she she ended up winning the Best Supporting Oscar, or sorry, the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for this role. She brilliantly portrays this mother whose primary motivations come from the love that she has from her family, specifically her daughter, and acts kind of as the negotiator between those affected by the crisis of Fonny being sent to jail as well as Tish uh, being pregnant. And it's just, it's a powerhouse performance that <clears throat> that I thought was worthy of winning the award. The pacing throughout the film after the first act seemingly becomes a bit disjointed and makes it a bit more... Damn, I keep getting congested to the point where I keep burping. Sorry. But it, it gets a bit disjointed and makes it a little bit more difficult to really keep my attention during the film. The first act was so great that, it, you know, it was only a bit downhill f after that point. And I think it's because they were focusing less on the family itself, which was honestly what I wish they had focused more on in the story. And this was one of those films for me where I wish it had moved a bit faster in the pacing. A slower pace isn't bad. But it felt like the pa uh, the pacing was sacrificed for pure artistry, and it takes some of the energy out of the film, and also not tied to what I wrote down. That's actually how I felt. That's one of the reasons why I feel the way I do about Barry Jenkins' films. Their, uh, their slower paces just feel a bit too, um, I don't know, sacrificial towards artistry, and I don't think it, um, I don't think it works for the overall product. Though we get more time with Tish herself, like, she's uh, she's obviously the the main character in the overall film. I'd say that in the um, in the flashback sequences, we get more of Fani as more of the main character, but it always feels like there's a bit more time given to Tish anyway. But we even get some narration from time to time showcasing her feelings, but it mostly focused on what it was like to be a black person at that time. I never really got to know her as a person, and because of this situation, I was still fairly drawn to her, but not not enough to really care. Uh, mostly I was drawn to Fonny because I got a definite grasp of who, of who he was as a person, as a character, but with Tish, I always felt like I was at a sort of distance with her, and I was just going to stay there the entire time. All in all, I'd say uh, that obviously, if Beale Street could talk, is not. Um, I don't want to use the word amazing. Uh, it's not as amazing as Moonlight. I still think uh, bo both are solid products. Uh, this one's another great product when you don't take into my um, my predisposed um, dis kind of dislike for his uh, for the director's artistic approach to things. But like I said, I will admit that uh, with either film, I don't see myself rewatching either Moonlight or If Beale Street Could Talk. I only rewatched it for this review, and I'm probably never going to see it again. And again, I, while I appreciate the craft from Jenkins, I always find his creative technical style to be a bit pretentious. It's stuff that I can enjoy in the moment, but afterwards I feel immediately and easily detached from and will most likely not be interested in watching later. But anyway, with that, my review ends here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, don't forget to hit... <coughs> okay, earlier I was having congestion and now I'm just... Ugh. Ugh. Now I feel a little too hydrated. What the don't forget to hit that like button, and also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And, as always, farewell until the next video, all of you casual moviegoers and movie fans alike, and keep on being awesome.